Just for a second, let me put you in a time machine. Jump back to around your second grade or so. You and some of your boys are on the playground, talking about dumb kid stuff like, Bro, you hear the new Xbox 720 is coming out? Or, I heard Miss Landon is actually a reptile in disguise. Also, if you're not a boy, which is statistically impossible, just imagine you are, because this scenario really doesn't work if you're not. But anyway, in this scenario, as children, you start to discuss children's cartoons. But as you're discussing it, you notice the energy of the conversation starts to become a little more adversarial. Because some of you have watched a little too much anime and have decided that Naruto is literally the strongest guy ever and Rasengan's can clear any dumb bitch who tries to fight him. But in opposition, the other side have all watched their dad's old DVDs of Blade and have decided that there is no way that he doesn't slice the shit out of Naruto. And now, you're not talking about which character is cool, you're talking about which character is cooler. And you're doing that by saying which one of them would beat the shit out of the other one in a fight. This right here is the baby stages of power scaling. What is power scaling? Well, put it in its most simple, most elementary, it's the exercise of asking who would win. And the question is most often asked when one or more of these participants are fictional, dead, or otherwise unable to definitively fight each other. We as a society have been doing this power scaling shit for centuries. We've been power scaling our fathers, our pets, animals that aren't our pets, ourselves, food, shoes, wrappers, and a lot of other bullshit. Literally anything with a pulse that is able to be compared, we will power scale. It's just in our nature. For some reason, we have to know which one of these two things is better at something. In most cases, fighting, because we are dumbass men. And fighting is the coolest shit in the world. But that point brings me to the most important and in-depth part of this brilliant pastime. Fictional characters. These guys are the cream of the crop when it comes to who would win discussions, and often they dominate the conversation. Because besides the ridiculous and impossible feats that these characters regularly manage to pull, because of their impact on a lot of impressionable children that have watched these crazy ass shows, they tend to stick in our brain for a long time. And time may grow you up, but you'll never outgrow wondering who Goku would be in a fight. And even when you are a kid, you got plenty of other kids to discuss this shit with, like it's the round table. Back when I was a kid, crossovers weren't this thing that happened every three months but they were this crazy ass event that never actually happened and when it did you went absolutely insane because holy shit how is this happening and as dumb as little kids you decide well I gotta make this myself so you decide to make these crossovers yourself and the discussions that sprouted from this were possibly the most intellectually involved some people have gotten in their entire lives Hell, oh, I saw kids that could barely remember their timetables suddenly talk up an entire thesis with several sources on why Superman could actually beat Goku. Of course, we were all Dragon Ball heads, so of course we said no and called him an idiot and a dumbass, but you know, looking back, maybe that kid was right. I mean, he really did make some good points. I, I don't know if that death battle was actually wrong, really. But the way I'm talking about this, you may think it's nothing but dumbass kid shit that you grow out of later in life. And for the people that didn't really take it too seriously, that may be true. You may just have drifted away from that stage in your life. But some people have never stopped and never stopped improving. If you dig deep enough, you'll start to find fully grown men that do not play about this power scaling shit. They are still ready to die behind that shit and all of their tape. These people are very dedicated. You could punch them in the face, egg their house, kick their dog, not come to their birthday party, insult their mother, kill their mother. None of that would matter comparatively. But you dare to tell a power scaler that they don't know what they're talking about, that somebody they said would win would actually lose, that their calculations are inaccurate, that that poop shit MacGuffin is only continental and not planetary? You will see a rage as if they have had a 1000 year blood feud against you and your entire bloodline. Because this shit is not a game. Power scaling is serious. The kitty gloves are off because we don't play about these children's cartoon characters. 
We ain't in the damn playground no more. We gotta get out the goddamn wikis and everything. Cause this is something more. You don't come with a minimum 10 sources, 5 calcs, and 5 scans, you may not survive. Cause we're talking about something so great, so astronomically advanced. You need to have hard evidence because this shit is a science. If you don't know how many terror shits per gigafart of TNT explosions that Spider-Man punching Naruto would generate, don't even bother trying to add your worthless, uneducated opinion. Because these discussions demand only the highest caliber of intelligence. After all, discussing imaginary fights between imaginary characters is seen as very respectable by the general population. Just look at where these scholars choose to conduct their business. The inhabitants of these places are optimized specifically for the Sisyphean task of arguing which drawing could be the other drawing. In fact, let's look at the scattering report for a general profile of a power scaler. First of all, as expected of a no-lifer, they have really good instincts for scoring opportunities. Just a great feel for when to completely derail a discussion in order to show their knowledge of power levels. Like, yeah, they might be talking about their grandmother dying of cancer, but did you know that Goku also died of a heart virus? Seems like they scale together. Let me tell you man, these guys never quit. They're as hardworking as they come. You know, first one on the computer, last guy off of type shit. Their grind is unmatched. Sometimes you'll see these people go on the computer for 8 to 12 hours at a time. Just relentless hunger for the game. And with that comes an unshakable confidence. Even when their shot isn't falling, even when they've been continuously proven wrong in every way, shape, and form, they will not stop shooting. They will not back down even if literally the entire world is telling them they're wrong. But there are negatives to this archetype, believe it or not. One of the chief ones being shot selection. They have the worst of it. At some points, these people will pick borderline unwinnable matchups and unwinnable arguments just to prove that they are right. Because again, they don't give up on anything. No matter how much it would really benefit them to just give up. Because they're also really lacking an awareness in that they're not aware that there could be a possibility that they could be wrong. That's the only possibility that's not stored in their heads. But you know, overall, very high motor prospect. And by high motor, I don't just mean effort. I mean they have a fucking motor mouth because they will not stop fucking talking. And by the end of it, you'd wish you had an SRT at the highest possible motor so you could fucking run them over. But in looking at this boundless and limitless energy, you have to wonder, what the fuck drives these people? I mean, they will literally go to the same exact sites and ask the exact same scenarios every day for the rest of their fucking lives. So why do people do this? What's even the point? Why go through all this trouble to create these painstaking hypothetical debates off of something that doesn't even exist? Is it just a way to entertain ourselves with pointless theoreticals? Or is it just a way to affirm whether our character is cooler than your character? Either way, it makes me wonder why we spend so much time on this. Do we really need a measure so advanced? Because we can just ask a much simpler question. Do we add that dog in them or no?